we are introduced to Tatsuhiro Sato, who is a hikikomori, which means he only stays at his house and has severe anxiety. He is 22 years old and has been a hikikomori for several years now. He is really unstable and he gets manipulated by even the dumbest people. Sato is also very obsessive and he thinks that behind all his troubles is a conspiracy called NHK. He thinks that this mysterious organisation creates hikikomori like him through TV programmes. Sato thinks this organisation controls the media and everything around it. Sato lives in an apartment but his rent is being paid by his parents. While he spends his days reading manga and novels, Sato does not do anything else basically. Sato has many problems but he is really annoyed by his next door neighbour constantly blasting very loud music. One day, a mysterious girl enters Sato's life. She is called Misaki Nakahara and she claims to be able to cure Sato of his condition. She wants Sato to be part of her project so that he can live a normal life. At first, Sato does not believe her at all, but eventually he decides to join in. Misaki wants Sato to sign a contract with her. This contract details that he must listen to her about anything she says, and this will help him get out of his bad lifestyle. Okay, Sato is really naive, because this man is going to sign this silly document. Tatsuhiro finally finds out that his annoying neighbour is actually his former friend from high school. His name is Keoru Yamazaki, and they actually have been neighbours for quite some time. Keoru is a hardcore otaku, who did not know that Sato lives nearby him. Keoru is actually a university student trying to study game design. Sato tries to pretend that he is not a total loser, so uses Keoru's book and tells Misaki that he is actually a game designer and not a loner. He also tells Misaki that he can show her his game. Kaoru then decides to help Misaki make a game so that he can get better. He gives him the task of being the writer for the game. Kaoru explains the game genre to Sato and he really starts to enjoy it. Kaoru actually likes to make erotic games, so Sato starts to play them all day long. He even collects dirty magazines for research. Kaoru thinks it's hilarious that Sato is also becoming an otaku. He is also not doing any writing, just enjoying the game and storylines. Sato is now a fully developed otaku, and he is obsessed with erotic manga stories and games. Kaoru decides to bring him to Akihabara, and she hopes that this will make him finally start writing. They go to a maid cafe and spend a lot of money on otaku merchandise. Sato actually meets up with another high school friend called Hitomi Keshiwa. They get a drink, and this is the first time Sato has been out this much. We learn more about Sato and Hitomi, and how they were in high school. Hitomi was Sato's senior, but they had a friendship. Sato realises that he has a horrible life, and he wants to get better. He goes and meets up with Misaki, and decides to sign her contract. Misaki then takes him to the first meeting, and there, Sato has a lot of work to do. Sato and Misaki spend more time together. He even finds out from her that Kaoru has a girlfriend who goes to his university with him. Sato is really interested in this, as he cannot believe that an otaku has a girlfriend. Even if he is really anxious, Sato goes to the school to find out the truth. Sato has a panic attack during his trip, but he finds out the truth about Kaoru and his non-existent girlfriend. Sato is now really emotional because of his recent panic attack. He does not want to leave his apartment ever again, as he is scared of his panic attacks. Sato pretends that he is sick, so that Kaoru buys him food for the house. Sato then gets a phone call from his mother. She wants to meet with him and talk about his uncertain future. Sato tells his mother that he actually has a well-paid job, and also a girlfriend. Sato cannot help himself with the lies, and tells his mother that he will soon be marrying this girl. Now, Sato is in deep trouble, and needs the help of his friends. Kaoru helps him create a fake game company, so that it seems like he's working. Misaki also offers to pretend to be Sato's girlfriend in front of his mother. His mother will soon visit, so Sato has to clear his apartment. His entire place is a total mess, so he has a lot of work to get done. Misaki arrives to help him clean. Sato's mother finally arrives, and she has lunch with both of them. They go to a restaurant, and while Sato is in the bathroom, his mother talks with Misaki. Sato's mother admits that she knows this is all a setup. She always knows when her son is lying to her. Sato hears his mother talk about him, and he gets even more depressed. 
His mother still pretends like this is all real, as she does not want him to feel guilty. Misaki and Sato get a bit too into their fake relationship, which leads to a romantic moment. Kaoru tries to ask a girl out called Nanako, but his advances fail and he is rejected. He gets really sad because he wanted to go to the firework festival with her. Nanako tells him that she has an audition that night, but Kaoru does not believe her. In the meantime, Sato starts to feel romantic feelings towards Misaki, which is totally new for him. He cannot write any work for this game as he is distracted. Kaoru and Sato decide to show off their game at the Summer Comic Etch Festival. Sato then goes with Misaki to the firework festival to celebrate. Nanako and Yamazaki try to have another date, but he then spots her with another guy. He thinks it's probably just nothing and decides to not get upset. Kaoru and Sato think that Misaki has started to act strange. Misaki is more mysterious than before and even distant towards the boys. They decide to follow her around and find out what is happening. Sato has a dream where everything around him starts to attack him. Sato also thinks that if he falls in love with Misaki, he will be a hikikomori forever. Hitomi starts to feel very isolated and depressed. She joins a mysterious group online. This group is very strange, and the members act very odd. Hitomi makes up a story about her partner beating her up. She pretends to like her abusive partner, and is actually Sato. Okay, this girl is not okay in the head. In the meantime, Kaoru and Sato are trying to finish their game in time for the festival. They are also preparing for the trip. Hitomi is then seen having dinner with Akira Jogasaki. Akira is really invested in his work, which makes Hitomi angry. Sato and Akira then spend a night together, and she admits about her new club and interest. Sato decides to join the group that Hitomi had mentioned. He thinks they're a bit weird, but he wants to spend time with other people. Sato goes with Hitomi to meet up with the group from the internet. They all go on a beach island trip. Okay, going on an island with total strangers is not a good idea, my guy. Sato starts to feel really uneasy as the group starts to act more creepy than before. Sato learns a horrible truth. This internet group is actually a suicide pact squad, and they plan to unalive themselves on the island. Sato now tries to get out of the entire situation, but he is trapped. In the meantime, Jogasaki, Keoru, and Misaki learn about this, and decide to save Sato and the members of this desperate internet group. They all rush to the island to stop their attempt. Sato is saved, and he can finally return to normal. He spends some time recovering, and then his friends decide to take him to a hot springs resort. Jogasaki came up with that idea. He also contacted all the family members of the internet group that wanted to unalive themselves. The family members of that group arrive at the hot springs, and they all talk to the sad and desperate people. They tell them that they truly mean something, and that they should stay alive. Misaki and Sato are kind of angry at each other because of this entire situation, but they make up for it in the next meeting. Sato finds out that his parents will be sending him a lot less money. He decides to find a job so that he can live normally in his apartment. He starts playing an MMORPG game called Ultimate Fantasy, and thinks he can sell game items for real money. Sato starts to play this game non-stop, and because of this, he does not focus on his writing. Kaoru is angry at him for not working on the game. Also, Sato stops going to meetings with Misaki. In the meantime, Sato meets a cat girl called Mia in the game, and they go on quests together. Sato is now in full hikikomori mode once again. Misaki goes to visit him, and his apartment is a total mess. Sato is fully focused on his life in the game, and wants to find items to sell. Mia invites him on a quest to fight a dragon. Misaki tries to get Sato to return to the real world, but she fails. After some time, Sato finds out that his cat girl partner Mia is actually Kaoru. Sato is disgusted and gets off the game finally. Sato meets up with Megumi Kobayashi, who is his former high school friend. Megumi was also the class representative. Sato admits that he is in fact a hikikomori, and that he is ashamed of himself. Megumi decides that she can help Sato and offers him an instant solution. They go to a very old building, and there, Sato listens to basically a Ponzi scheme pitch. This is a meeting for a detergent product, and Sato is bored out of his mind. He realises that Megumi has set him up. He tries to find a way to escape from the situation. 
Megumi then goes after him and tells him about her sad life. Finally, Sato, being totally naive, buys the detergent powder from her. Sato is really angry as he figures out that he was tricked by Megumi. He tries to call her, but she starts to trick Sato once again with her lies. She also starts to sell her product to Misaki and Kaoru. She convinces the group that her product might help Sato with his condition. The group soon figures out that they have been totally scammed and cheated. They later confront Megumi at her house. There, they meet her brother Yuichi, who is an ultimate fantasy player just like Sato. Megumi once again tells her tragic story to fool Sato. Sato talks with her brother Yuichi in game. Megumi and her scammers all get arrested and she does not come home for several days. That's what you get, play dumb games and get dumb rewards. Yuichi now has no food, so he starts to beg to eat something at a local ramen shop. He gets hired as a delivery driver. Megumi decides that she wants to go back to college and live an honest life. Kaoru has a father who is very sick. Because of this, Kaoru has to return to his hometown and work on the farm. The game project that Kaoru and Sato has been working on has to be done very fast so that they can present it at Fuyukomi. Kaoru is sad because he will have to leave Tokyo forever. Sato records Kaoru and his confession to Nanako and reveals him to be a true otaku. The friends continue their hard work on the game. The game is done and the reviews are great. While the reviews are great, the game does not sell really well at the festival. Kaoru finally packs up all his things and goes back to his hometown. Sato also goes with him to the railway station. Sato is also totally alone, and he starts to be crazy again. Misaki wants to test Sato and his progress. They will go out on Shibuya during the New Year's Eve event. Sato is now totally paranoid and he runs into Hitomi. Okay, this girl is about to do some toxic shit. Hitomi and Sato spend the New Year's Eve together in Tokyo. They talk about their lives and Sato really wants to be intimate with Hitomi. Misaki tries to get Sato to get away, but he is totally lost. Finally, Tatsuhiro and Misaki meet up at the train station. He lies about Hitomi, which makes Misaki really sad. Misaki and Sato have another meeting and she admits to seeing him with Hitomi. Sato is unable to lie and he is really depressed now. Misaki creates a test for Sato. They later talk about suicides of famous people. Misaki then tells Sato that he will graduate tomorrow. The graduation exam is them taking a two hour walk in the city. They will then end their tour in a park. Misaki starts to feel very tired and she even collapses on the ground. She has to stay at the hospital. Soon, Sato learns the truth about Misaki. She has had a very traumatic life with her parents being abusive. Because of this, she is very unstable. Misaki decides to leave the hospital and unalive herself. Sato is worried about Misaki and runs after her trying to stop her from jumping off a cliff. This is the same place where her mother jumped off. Sato gets there just in time and stops Misaki from jumping. Sato then becomes unstable and also wants to jump off because he thinks the NHK has hurt Misaki. Finally, Sato manages to wake up from his delusions and realises that he loves Misaki, and there is no NHK. Kaoru and Hitomi start to live normal lives. Sato and Misaki agree to keep living and deal with their problems together. <laughs>